terribly sorry, Jan, but I'm afraid I have to go. But, Wally, why? You promised to stay a week. I have everything planned. I wish I could stay, dear. You know I do, but something's come up. It can't be as important as that. You could stay if you wanted to. You could call whoever it is. Wally, please. Look, Jan, we can't go on like this. It's just no good. You, you don't mean that. Aren't you treating my wife rather shabbily, old boy? You know she's in love with you. Now, wait a minute, Tommy. Well, isn't she? I don't know what you're talking about. You do, my dear, don't you? Yes. It's true. I do love you with all my heart. Wait a minute. That's not the line, is it? Sounds so... so corny. I think that's the line, dear. You know, you changed it this morning. Well, even I can make mistakes. Let's see. Husbands, husbands. Yeah, that's a line, all right, but it's no good. Look, when the husband says, you do, my dear, etc., just say very quietly, yes, I do. Uh, shall I put my hand on his arm? No, don't do anything. Stand perfectly still, but bring it from way inside. It's simpler that way and be a lot more effective. All right, let's try that. Take it back a couple of minutes. Right, let's see. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You do, my dear. Here they are, out here. Uh-oh. That's the end of rehearsal. Um, Hello, Greg. Ah, oh, Julie, my wonderful one. Limpum posinka mine. Mm. I adore you. What you got to eat? Nothing you like, I'm sure. Hello, darling. Hello, you two. Hi, Julie. Wonderful. Go on out. We're lunching on the terrace. Well, hello. Hello, beautiful. Greetings, Maestro. Hello, Hello, ah, Tom. Bill, Limpum Ponchik, mine. My favorite director, my favorite producer. Anyhow, hello. Hello, Greg. Are we interrupting something? Oh, no, we're just running over a few scenes from the new piece. Part for me? Yep, I'm afraid so. Another crazy, excitable Russian, I suppose. <laughs> Wrong. You're going to love this part. You're a quiet, attractive old smoothie for a change. Goody, when do I get the script and a drink? Dolly, send your script tomorrow. Okie dokie. Ah, food. It's divine out here today, Julie, isn't it? Oh, I just love it. Aren't you going to mix your chums a drink, darling? Hmm? Oh, sure. Best one they ever tasted. If you'd lift those pretty eyes of yours, you'd see that we have guests for lunch. See how she orders me around? Too bad. <laughs> Do I hate it. You know, you might put on a shirt before we eat. You tell me you love me madly. That's all I ask. Oh, just fairly madly. Hmm? Oh. After five years of marriage, this is obscene. <laughs> Disgusting. Hey, when do we eat? What's he made up for? Ah, Donnelly. Hello. Hello, characters. Hello. Boy, did I get Long Island Sound between my toes. <laughs> There's nothing like a brisk wade to work up an appetite. Believe it or not, Julie, I was in almost up to my knees today. It's gonna be over your head in a few days. We start rehearsals in three weeks. Three weeks? Yep. Well, with an all-around right-hand man like me at your elbow, you can start tomorrow. <laughs> Have I really got a good part, Julie? I shouldn't be surprised if you walk away with the show. Well, the day anybody walks away with the show from Julie Beck, I'm Santa Claus. No actress in this man's town can do it. And no actor, either. Oh, Bill, give these boys all the drinks they can hold. Where are you going? To turn on the music for you, sweetheart. See? That's the kind of service I get. It ain't bad enough he's got to have music with his meals. It always has to be the same tune. When are you going to get tired of that tune? When Julie gets tired of me. No record can last that long. And look, Walt, I want those sketches for the first act by the middle of next week. Well, that's impossible, but you usually get what you want. Shall I serve lunch, Mr. Weatherly? Sure, I guess so. Yes, sir. Where's Julie? Uh, I'll get her.
Julie! Oh. Well, what are you doing sitting there like... Julie? What's the matter, baby? Nothing, darling. I... I just... What is it? What happened? Oh, I... I just felt a little faint for a minute. I'm all right now. You are not. You're white as a sheet. I'm going to call Doc Miller. No, please. You go on and have your lunch, and I'll be out in a little while. You're going upstairs and go to bed. I'm going to get Miller down here right away. Oh, Bill, really? Can't a person feel a little woozy once in a while? Not when it's you. You look very pretty in a bed jacket, Julie. Is it that bad? You'll be wearing one of the next two or three weeks. But you know I can't, Jim. I know you can, and I know you will. Or I'll tell your boyfriend. And Bill will keep you in bed for the rest of your life if I tell him that it's necessary. Now look here, Julie. We've been over this before. You've got to slow down. I promise. Oh, you've promised before, but you go right on the same way. Your right king takes too much out of you. What you put in it. And then in addition, you take all Bill's troubles on your shoulders, too. Staging, casting, every last detail of production. But we've always worked that way. He wouldn't understand it if I... He'll understand if I tell him your condition. You don't want that, do you? But you won't. You promised me. It's different with Bill. He can work like a maniac day and night. He's as strong as an ox. But you aren't. Jim, tell me the truth. It's just a matter of time, isn't it? In a sense, that's true of all of us. But since we're talking about Julie Beck's heart, I'd say it depends on Julie Beck. Julie, my dear, I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm not a prophet. But I am a doctor and your friend. And this is serious. It's not myself I'm worried about. It's Bill. I don't think he'd go on without me. He could, but he wouldn't. He may have to, if you don't take care of yourself. I wish I had a child. I wish so, too. It would be someone for him to cling to, if... You know, you could adopt a child, Julie. Yes. I've thought of that. What did he kick me out of the room for? Because you make him nervous. Look what you're doing to me. For once in your life, shut up, will you? Okay, okay. Look, Bill, if I was worried, I'd tell you, wouldn't I? Is she all right, Jim? A couple of weeks in bed and she'll be as good as ever. A couple of weeks? She needs a rest, that's all. And you better see that she gets it. Oh. Well, sure she needs a rest. You know, you ain't the easiest guy in the world to live with. I ought to know. Not that I'm complaining. Julie, baby, don't ever give me a scare like that again. I almost passed out myself. Now, listen. You're going to rest, and I mean rest, right here in bed for two weeks. Don't worry about rehearsals. Don't worry about anything. Don't even think. Just lie here like a queen and take it easy and learn your lines. And... <laughs> Whoa. What are you laughing at? You. You're so cute.
don't let Bill keep those people rehearsing on the curtain time. Who's to stop him? You know how he is before a tryout. I've seen him through five of them, not counting the flops he had before he married you. I think I'll walk back to the hotel. I got orders to drive you. Oh, I need some fresh air. A walk along the beach will do me good. See you for dinner. Anything you say, Queenie. Haven't I, though? They're fresh air fund campers. This group was from the Martha Stone orphanage in Brooklyn. Oh, I see. They seem to be having a lovely time. Yes, poor mice. Their week goes so fast. Miss Minnie, Miss Minnie, we've got ours finished. Come see. And it's a good one, too. Oh, that's nice. Pardon me. golden. Why, uh, well, it was a long, long time ago. What's your name? Kitty. Oh, that's a lovely name. Mine's Julie. Oh. Well, don't you like it? I, I thought your name was the Lady of Shalott. The Lady of Shalott. That's what it said when Miss McMasters read about you in the poetry. Yes, but... Aren't you the lady in the tower who had to see the world in a mirror, like shadows? Yes, I, I guess I am, Hitty. I was watching for seahorses. I saw some just a minute ago. Oh? They were happy way out there, kicking up their heels. And they had beautiful white tossing manes, didn't they? And blue, blue eyes like sapphires. All the time I knew you were true. Everything you really believe in is true, Hitty. Could I ask you a question? You don't have to tell if it's a secret. I'm sure you could keep a secret. Oh, yes. How did you break the spell and get out of that boat when you were supposed to be dead? You remember in the poem when Sir Launcelot saw the lady lying in the boat and said, God in his mercy grant her grace. God must have heard him, Hitty. I'm glad God happened to be listening. Yes. Are those pearls of great price? I believe so. Sir Launcelot gave them to me. Only everybody calls him Bill nowadays. Bill? Oh, yes. He's Sir Launcelot and Robin Hood and Bill, all rolled up in one. Is he a giant? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't quite reach to the sky, Hitty, but he's pretty big. Uh, will you children be down here on the beach tomorrow? We're going back home tomorrow. Oh, I see. It isn't my real home, of course. Some gypsies stole me when I was a baby and took me there. Miss McMasters is holding me captive until I can raise the ransom. Oh. Of course, some prince might come and rescue me and take me to the castle of my ancestors. Oh, I shouldn't be at all surprised. 
Maybe the castle isn't there anymore. Oh, they built those castles to last for centuries, you know. You live in a castle, don't you? Would you like to come and see it one day? Oh, yes. Kitty! Oh, Kitty! Where are you? They're calling you. Oh, there you are. Mercy, child, come along. I'm terribly sorry. It's my fault. We didn't hear. That's quite all right. It's time to go back, Kitty. Yes, ma'am. Well, goodbye, Liddy. Hurry up, dear. Would you like this? You can hear the ocean in it. Thank you very much, dear. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Liddy. Wonderful, babe. Terrific, Queenie. You did it again. We did it again. I'll Bill. say we did. We could open tomorrow on Broadway and run two years. You're yeah. glorious, Bravo, darling. Bravo, darling. Oh, didn't you see me shaking when I was fishing for that love? You know, honey, I think we could help that second act curtain. It's too long a wait when you cross to Judson. Maybe he needs a line to cover. Asleep? No. What do you think? All right. What I had in mind was this. Bill. Hmm? What, honey? What would you say to our... adopting a child? Hmm? What? I thought it might be wonderful to adopt a child. Well, what for? Don't you think it would be nice? Well, sure, but... <laughs> What's the matter with me? Am I getting too big, Mom? You need somebody to play with. You'd make a wonderful father, Bill. Where'd you get this idea all of a sudden? I've been thinking about it for a long time. You're all the family I need. But if you want to give me a little brother or sister, anything you want's all right with me. I love you very much. Are you trying to flirt with me? Oh, go to sleep. Julie. Yes? Maybe Donnelly's not so nuts at that. Maybe the show will run two years in New York. Maybe three. Maybe.
you. Right this minute, too. Of course, you'll want to know all about us, too, and see where Hitty'd live. We have an apartment in town when we're working, as we are just now. Yes, I know. The papers say your new play is the best thing in New York. And I don't wonder. I never miss a Julie Beck play. How sweet of you to say so. Hear that, Bill? Hmm? Oh, 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 sure. Absolutely, I agree. Then we're not exactly strangers to you, Miss McMasters. No. Not nearly as much as Hitty is, you might say. I was a lot like Hitty when I was her age. That's why I liked her right from the start. People thought I was odd, but I wasn't. As a matter of fact, I thought they were odd, but we all grew out of it. Come in. It's the lady. Hello, Hitty. I'm so glad to see you again, dear. Hello, Julie. Come on over here. I've got somebody I want you to meet. Kitty, this is Bill. How do you do? Hello there, young lady. How are you? Fine. Bill is Sir Lancelot, remember? Oh, oh, sure, sure. One and the same. I traded in the old spear and the armor for, for this model. I'll be in my office right down the hall. We'll be in later. I knew you'd come. Of course. We've wanted to see you for a long time, haven't we, Bill? That's true. We'd have come a lot sooner, only we've been so busy. Haven't we, Bill? That's a fact. Only came up for air and a ham sandwich. Still, that's show business for you, Kitty. It's Hitty, sir. It's really mehitable, but that's long for Hitty. Oh, Hitty. I'm sorry. I've got it straight now, Hitty. Sometimes I'm Gertrude, and sometimes I'm Amaryllis. Gertrude sleeps on a cloud. It must be lovely to be Gertrude. I'm pretending to be somebody named Janice every night, and Bill shows me how to do it. That's our work. It's called theater. It's wonderful work. Would you like Bill to explain about it? Oh, yes, please. Anything you want to know, just ask the old maestro. Well, let's see now. You've seen shows, haven't you? Like the Ladies Guild Flower Show? Uh huh. Go on, dear, explain it. It's this way, see? You've got a play to put on. That's a story, one you can act out on the stage. All right, and then you hire some actors. Actors, you know, to speak the dialogue and, and act the characters in the play. Well, if they're good and the play's good, you've got a hit. If not, you've got a turkey. Is that all there is to it? I guess that's about it. Have I left anybody out? A few, including yourself. Oh, me? I'm just kind of head traffic cop, back of the footlights. Don't you believe him, Hitty. He's a very great director. Someday you'll come to the theater and then you'll see how it is. I like it already, because it's all make-believe. <laughs> uh, Julie, I was supposed to meet Watkins about those Chicago contracts, remember? And you wanted to speak to Miss McMasters, didn't you? Yes, darling. Hitty, will you show us the way? Yes, it's right out here. You remember that shell you gave me? Well, whenever I miss the ocean, I put it up to my ear and it sounds just as if I... Good afternoon. Uh, I want to look at some toys. Lots of them, but we got to step on it. I haven't got much time. This way, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Tweedy, take care of this customer, please. He's in a great hurry. Yes. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? Oh, well, it's like this. The boss is about to become a father. Oh, I see. It's a girl. Oh, they've made up their minds. What do you mean, made up their minds? They know. They've seen her. Seen her? Naturally. What goes with girls? Little girls. They like dolls, don't they? Uh, invariably, sir. Uh, it's crying, sir. It's a crying doll. Oh. Very natural, don't you think? Yes. But I'm afraid it's a wee bit old for a new baby, sir. Now, if I may suggest uh, rattles... No, 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 no. You got me wrong. You see, this baby is born, weaned, full-sized. Here, uh, wrap Lizzie up. Uh, yes, sir. Now, let's see. What else you got? Well, how old is this child, sir? How old? 
didn't say. Look, it's this way. We're sitting in the office. The phone rings. It's the bride telling him to come right home. She's got a kid. He staggers out, leaving me on the ropes. Can you tie that? It's been going on for weeks. Neither of them spilled a syllable. If I'd known they were going to adopt somebody. Oh, an adopted child. Well, sure, what'd you think? Uh, adopted kids like to play with toys, just like real kids, don't they? Oh, yes, of course, sir. That's what I thought. I'm adopted myself. Would you consider an elephant, sir? An elephant? Oh, oh an elephant. <laughs> I thought you meant an elephant, the kind you carry water for. <laughs> yeah, okay, wrap it up. Now, let's see, what else would a kid expect for a favorite uncle? Afternoon, Mr. Weatherly. Hello. Some of those boats go all the way up the river to Providence and Boston, New Bedford. Providence. That must be a beautiful city. I'm sure it is. <coughs> Oh, hello, darling. Hello, people. I'm glad to see you, Hitty. How are you? Fine, thank you. That's good. <laughs> we were watching the boats while we were waiting for you, weren't we, Hitty? Oh, yes. So you like boats, do you? Yes, sir. Bill, dear. I should say so. It's Bill and Hitty from now on. Why don't you two sit down over here and keep an eye on the river while I make something nice and cool to drink, huh? Good girl. I'm kind of partial to boats myself. Shall we have another look? All right. There's a nice big one, that old freighter. What do you suppose she's carrying? Fried bananas? Fried? <laughs> no, of course not. Raw. Would you like to see my watch? It's an old one. I'm very fond of it. It belonged to my father. It's very nice. <laughs> Not very lively music, is it? Shall I change it? Oh, no, I like it. It's like water. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Nice, watery music. It makes you feel kind of thirsty, doesn't it? Oh, no, not that kind of water. Oh, more like river water? No, just water. Blue water. Oh, here we are. It's pretty close to dinner time, but I think today Hitty could have a glass of ginger ale with us. Thank you. Hmm. Well, here's to us. To us. To us. Hello, Martha. Oh, Mr. Donnelly. Where's the little stranger? And Momsy and Popsy. Come on in, Donnelly. Ah. Well, shall I? Uh... Oh, no, thanks, Lassie. Yonky, you'll make it. Uh... <laughs> Here, let me give you a Not hand. on your life. Well, well, well. What do you know? Hitty, this is Uncle Donnelly. How do you do? How do you do yourself? I bet you can't guess who these are all for. Me, maybe? You keep out of this. If these don't make your eyes pop, I don't know, kids. See, I think this is number one. While you're doing that, I'll mix you a drink. Yeah, thanks. I could use one. Where did you learn about kids in the funny papers? Always knew about them. I used to be one. Oh, no. Here. How's that? Like it? Oh, yes. It's like a real little baby. It cries, too. It cries all the time. Listen. You'll probably be up half the night walking the floor with her. And this goes with it. Here. Don't let them snap at each other now. Oh, they wouldn't. Oh, of course not. And this is just in case you get a yen to express yourself. It's got a good tone, too. Listen. Good, huh? Uh, your Uncle Donnelly's a regular Santa Claus, isn't he, dear? And I'm just getting warmed up. Wait till you see this. Oh. Uh, this is an elephant, except that it's much nicer to feel than a real elephant, because it's velvet. Like it? Oh, yes, Uncle Donnelly. Ha! You keep on calling me Uncle, and I'll get you a whole menagerie. 
A unicorn, too? The biggest uni... Unicorn? What kind of corn is that? It's got one horn in the middle of its forehead. I saw a picture of one in a book. Oh, 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 them. I'll get you a whole flock of them. Oh, will you, Uncle Donald? Sure. But I think they only come in ones. Excuse me. Oh, uh, come in, Miss Benson. This is Mr. Weatherly, Miss Benson, and Mr. Donnelly. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Donnelly brought Hitty some beautiful presents. My, what a lot. Come, dear. It's time for us to get ready for dinner now. Say goodnight to Uncle Donnelly, dear. Good night, Uncle Donnelly. And thanks for everything. The unicorn, too. Don't mention it, Nisi. Lots more coming. Come, dear. Good night. Good night. Well, all I can say is you two always did know how to pick them. Isn't she wonderful, Don? Terrific. Wait till you know her better. You love her. I'm hooked already. And what a lucky guy you are. Yeah. It's very sweet of you, Don, to go to all this trouble. Forget it. And boy, is she smart. How do you like that, that unicorn thing she pulled on me? <laughs> That's mild, brother, to some of the things she pulled on me. It's just that she has such a wonderful imagination. I'll say. Oh, we're going to have some great times, you and Queenie and Nisi and me. Raiding the icebox, wading in the sound. I bet you can't wait till tomorrow to get out of the country, huh, Maestro? Mm, we're leaving early. I don't think we'll be going out of the house tomorrow, Don. Why not? We always do. I really think it would be better not to go just this first Sunday. Would you mind very much, darling? Let's get used to being a family right here first. But it'll be hot in town. Why can't we get used to being a family down there? You won't be sorry. We'll have a lovely time. Well, okay, if that's the way you want it. Come in. Good morning, Mahedible. Good morning, Bill. Breakfast, Your Highness. Hooray! I reserved the table right over here. Looks good, too. There you are. Mm. Your napkin, sir. Thank you. Your paper, sir. Thank you. It's turned to drama, review of the week. My goodness, how did you know that's what I like with Sunday morning breakfast? <laughs> it's a deep, dark secret, isn't it, Hitty? Oh, mystery women, eh? Well, madam, how about pouring my coffee? Think you can manage it, Hitty? Yes, Julie. It won't matter if you scald him a little. Never mind, Hitty, I'll pour it myself. You're a miner. Can't work miners in this state, especially on Sunday. Thanks just the same. Let Hitty pour it, dear. Oh? All right. Guess I'm too weak to lift it after all. Thank you. Now his robe, Hitty, goes right here at the foot of the bed. Yes, Julie. We do spoil him, don't we, dear? But I suppose it's too late to change now. We'll just have to go right on being his slaves. I remember. We have a wonderful day planned for you, darling, haven't we, Hitty? Oh, yes, we're going to the zoo. The zoo? <laughs> now, don't pretend you're not excited. It will do you good. How? You can learn a lot from the animals, can't he, Hitty? How am I supposed to take that? Cheerfully. Now, you finish your breakfast and get dressed, and we'll be ready to leave in an hour. I'll be with you. Hurry now. What next? Bears or seals? Seals, huh? Good. <laughs> Here's another one. Oh, look at that one over there. He looks like a dolphin. A what? A dolphin. Of course he does. Funny I didn't think of it myself. A dolphin is a sea creature that used to play with Neptune and his wife. Oh, that must have been a lot of fun. Look. Let's go someplace and have a nice big banana split. You know, bananas, ice cream, nuts, and a lot of goo. You can make believe it's a wog wog or a griffin or something else before you eat it. <laughs> well, before we do, let's see what else they have here. He carries his own stilts, doesn't he? He's like an... 
and... Come on, Hitty, let's have it. I knew he'd be something else. I don't know how to say it. It's I-B-I-S. Ibis. Yes, Ibis. Tell me something, Hitty. Where did you learn about all these Ibises and dolphins? In a house where Miss McMaster set me to live once. I saw their pictures in a book, but I knew who they were the moment I saw them. The man said there never were any Ibises and things. But I told him I knew there were because I'd seen them. What did he say to that? He didn't say anything. He didn't understand, did he, dear? No. What do you say we go someplace and cool off, huh? I remember when they had swan boats on this lake. When I was a kid, I was crazy to ride in one. But I never had the price. Oh, that's too bad. Now that I've got the price, there are no swan boats. And look at me, a regular galley slave. Poor darling. Sympathy is what I love most, next to you. Why, what's the matter, dear? I'm afraid. Afraid of what? You won't go away someday like the Lady of Shalott, will you? Go away? Where? What's she talking about? She's just thinking about a poem, dear. Doesn't she ever think about... about what's going on right here? Bill. I'm sorry. Julie, don't ever go away. Don't cry, Hitty. I'm not going away. Let's go in, Bill. Please. I'm sorry, Hitty, but... Honestly, you ought to come out of the attic once in a while. You get cobwebs in your hair. Here you are, folks. Horses, all kinds of horses. Thoroughbreds, fiery steeds, and champions. How about a horse with a little girl, mister? Would you like a horse, Hitty? You can't go wrong, little lady. They have a pedigree a mile long. Guaranteed sound in wind and limb. And to you, mister, only one buck. How about it? Oh, yes, Bill. Well, let's see. This one looks like he might do. Oh, no. This one, please. All right. He looks fine. He looks like a real thoroughbred. He is a nice one. Here you are, pal. Thank you, mister. All right, folks. Horses, thoroughbreds, fiery steeds, and champions. He's the most beautiful horse I ever saw. Sure. That's why I picked him. Makes Seabiscuit look like a plug. What do you call your little horse, Hitty? No name. Quite a handle, eh, Doc? No name. <laughs> Just right for a noble steed like that, hmm? How is she, Jim? Just a little tempter. She'd go right in a day or two. See, what did I tell you? Children get these stomach upsets now and then. Just nature's way of showing them who's boss. That's good news, isn't it, Hitty? Sure, she's gonna be all right. Good night, my Hittable. Good night. Good night, young lady. Good night, Doctor. Come on, darling, we better get started. Will you be all right while we're gone? Yes, Julie. Good night, darling. Julie. Yes, dear. Will you turn on my record before you go, please? Of course, darling. That's our song. Yes, I know, Bill, but it's Hitty's song now, too. She likes to play it while we're at the theater. Oh. Night, Hitty. 
If you need anything, dear, just call Martha. I will. No name, eh? <laughs> That's just like her, isn't it? I wish somebody loved me as much as that child does you, Julie. Bill, would you mind very much if I didn't go to the party? What do you mean? Well, I, I thought I'd stay with Hitty. You go on and tell but Ruthie. Jim says she's all right. Yes, I know, but she still has a little temperature and Miss Benson's out. There's nothing for you to do here. Martha will take care of her if she needs anything. No, Bill, please. You understand. Sure I do. I like the kid, too. But we don't have to change our whole lives on her account, do we? Nothing to worry about. She's the most self-sufficient child I ever saw in my life. Come on, let's go. I'm, I'm sorry, Bill. I just can't leave her alone tonight. Okay. Bill! He's more of a child than Hitty. That's why I wanted her, for him. I thought she might help him grow up. And look after him, too, if it comes to that. I'm afraid it won't work, my dear. I'm sorry. What do you mean? It is a rare child, and that's not the kind Bill needs. He just doesn't speak her language. He'll never understand her. He's too self-absorbed. He's too used to having you and his world revolve around him. You've done that to him, you know. We've been very happy, Jim. Yes, I know you have. And I want you to continue to be happy. Bill won't change. And Hitty won't change either. Are you suggesting that... that I send Hitty back? Well, you see how it is. Someday you will have to choose, Julie. But I... I can't, Jim. I couldn't send Hitty back now. I love her too much. More than Bill? I'm sorry, my dear. But she's been here long enough to give it a fair trial. And the sooner you do it, the better it will be for Hitty as well as for Bill, and you. You know, this isn't helping your condition either. It is young, she'll get over it. You'll still be the Lady of Shalott in her dreams. I can't, you. I can't. I'm afraid you must, my dear. If you wait too long, this may lead to... Think it over, Julie. Good night, my dear. Yes? May I come in, Julie? Of course, dear. Did you have a good lesson? Yes, Julie. Except in arithmetic. Miss Benson says I'll have to dig in. 
I wasn't very good at arithmetic either. I'm afraid that's why I went on the stage. I wanted to show you something. It's my diary. Oh, I didn't know you were keeping a diary. I just started it. I've only written on three pages. Yesterday, next Wednesday, and next Christmas. Next Christmas? Yes. Sit down, dear, and read me everything you've written. This is yesterday. Today Uncle Don brought me this diary and made some jokes. I had my first lesson since I was sick. Julie took me to lunch and everybody looked at her because she is so beautiful. I had dinner by myself because Julie was going out to have dinner with Bill. Bill has been very busy lately, so I haven't seen him very much. Here's next Wednesday. I went to Julie's matinee again. Remember, you promised to take me to the matinee. Of course I did. And here's next Christmas. We had a beautiful tree and sang Christmas carols, like you said. I haven't got today yet, because today isn't over with, and I don't know what will happen. It's a lovely diary, Hitty. Hitty, I... You know, Hitty, we all live more or less by our dreams. I think people like you and me would die if we couldn't dream. Bill, too. Bill's a great dreamer in his own way. I... Hitty, my darling. Sometimes we want things so badly, so badly that we don't realize how selfish we are. Now I know that nothing really belongs to us that is bought at somebody else's expense. And, and we must give it up, no matter at what cost. Do you think you understand? Yes, Julie. You know how it is with Bill and me, how we love each other. People who love each other must learn to make allowances for each other. They don't always see eye to eye on things, even important things. There's you, for instance. Bill sees you one way and I another. I know what you mean, Julie. Bill doesn't like me to talk about ibises and unicorns and things like that the way you do. And you want me to talk about things he likes. Isn't that what you mean, Julie? Yes, of course. <gasps> Julie! Yes, of course. That's what I mean. What's the matter, Julie? Tell Martha to get Dr. Miller right away. Martha! as we're in each other's hearts and thoughts. That's not really going away. And Hitty, stay with Bill, no matter what. 
Stay with him. Watch over him. Bring him his breakfast. And the flour on his napkin. He's so, so little. All the things we did for him together. We'll still do for him. Yes, Julie, I promise. Julie. Julie. Oh, Julie. 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 See how it goes tonight. Yeah. Mr. Weatherly, I just phoned Dr. Miller. There's something wrong with Miss Julie. What? Something's happened. Hurry, please. Julie. Where's the doctor? He's coming, Bill Martha Corbin. Where do you say we go, huh, Bill? I know how you feel. I feel the same way, but it doesn't do you any good coming here every day like this. She wouldn't want you to go to pieces. You know that, don't you, Bill? You could even open the show again with Ruthie. I got a hunch Julie would want you to do that. It would take your mind off things. Don't you think so? Bill, you've got to pull yourself together. And I think you ought to go home. You know you're welcome to stay at my place as long as you like, but there's no one to look after you there. Besides, there's Hitty. You ought to go back to her. Poor kid, she's alone there waiting for you. You owe her something too, you know. Come on, Bill. Come on. Won't you eat a little more, Miss Hitty? I don't think I can eat a bite of dinner. Well, I can't say as I blame you. I've never seen such a child. If she'd just open her mouth and say something. But there she sits, night after night, staring at his empty plate. And me, cooking meals for him and her when there's only her there to eat it. 
and fixing those breakfast trays. You know, just this morning I tried to tell her, there's no use carrying it upstairs, dear. He ain't there. But she would have it. Didn't even have to feed a spare as usual. If he don't come home soon. I say it's more his fault than hers, leaving a child like that to run the house. Does she want any dessert? She didn't say. She never says anything. It's giving me the creep, she in that locked room. And him carrying the key. Like we go in there against his orders. Well, it's morbid. That's what it is. What have you got for dessert, Agnes? Chocolate pudding. It's a favorite. I'll try again. You'd like the dessert, Miss Hitty, if you'd only try it. It's chocolate pudding. Nobody could have done better. I knew you'd come back. I've never been away. Have I no name? That's what he said. Now Bill will come back too, won't he? Of course he will. But you mustn't cry. He wouldn't like that. And don't you think you ought to wash your face and put on a pretty hair ribbon? He might come back any time, even tonight. And you want to look pretty for him, don't you? Oh, yes. Your Highness. Well, aren't you going to get into bed? Just put it on the desk. Please get into bed, Bill. In bed. 
There you are. Now you just wait until I open up the curtains, then I'll pour your coffee for you. Spoiled, that's all. You don't mind if I scold you a little bit, do you? No, I don't mind. There. Your napkin, sir. Take it away. <laughs> to bother about my breakfast anymore, Hitty. Oh, yes, I do. Miss Benson went away this morning. Who? The governess. What for? She said I drove her crazy. give you the dramatic section. Thanks. No name's glad you're home, too. Good morning, Mr. Weatherly. Good morning, Martha. It's good to have you home again, sir. Thank you. There's something I ought to tell you, sir. Miss Benson... Oh, she... yes, yes, I know. And there's something else, sir. She orders your dinner cooked night after night. I mean, Hitty. And sits alone at table watching your empty place. What? That's what she does, sir. And your breakfast tray, too. Bringing it up here every morning, though she knows you're not there, sir. Will you be coming home for dinner tonight, sir? I don't know. Keep an eye on her, will you, Martha? That I will, sir. Martha. Yes, sir? I'll be home for dinner. Oh, thank you, sir. Hello, Martha. Mr. Donnelly. How's life in the great indoors? Oh, it's a worry like it is outdoors. Oh, uh, just a minute. I don't want to forget this. So you brought her a book this time. If you ask me, she's had too much of books already. Oh, this isn't for her. It's for me. You see that? A shortcut to child pie... Sa sa no, no, no. You don't sound the P. Psychology. A shortcut to child psychology. My, what's that? Psychology is the science that treats of mental phenomena and their classification and analysis. Child psychology is the same thing, only with kids. It tells you what goes on in their noodles so you can steer them in the right direction. Martha, do you know what that book is going to do? What, sir? This book is going to bring Bill and Hitty together. You don't say. Well, sure, I'll explain it to you. Now, for instance, take unicorns. Unicorns? Yeah, it's some kind of an animal. I don't know what it is myself. Anyway, Hitty wants one, and I promised it to her. I went to every pet shop in town, but they just don't stock them. I don't know why. But do you go to Hitty and say, unicorns are no good, forget them? No, you say unicorns are terrific. Some of my best friends are unicorns. Now, I don't say that a puppy is in the same class with a unicorn. However, it's a mighty handy thing to have around. So what do you say to a nice puppy? Right away, she's howling for a puppy. I get her one. Bill sees her playing with it. That's something he can understand. And the first thing you know, they're like that. Good. That's the positive approach. Here, I got it marked in the book here. here. In dealing with precocious children, indirect persuasion on the child's psychological plane is superior to 
ratiocination on the adult level. It's very simple. Bill's secretary, Miss Weintraub, explained it to me. It makes me want a puppy myself. It does? Yes. Well, you see, it works. Oh, it's kind of you to read a whole book on Hitty's account, Mr. Donnelly. Oh, I'd do anything for that kid. Hello, Uncle Don. Well, well, look who's here. I was just about to ask for you to come down. Why, well, you're looking swell today. Bill's back. Well, sure, I knew he'd come back. Hiya, champ. What's good in the fall? We came down to watch the boat. You did? Well, you sure got a good grandstand seat here for it. What do you like, steamboats or sailboats? Oh, I like sailboats. Someday I'm going to ask Bill to take me and No Name all the way up to Providence. Providence? What do you want to go there for? Because it's so beautiful. Whatever gave you that idea? It just sounds like it must be. Now, listen, if you ever asked Bill to do a crazy thing like that, he'd think you were positively... Uh, no. No, no, that isn't what I mean. Here, here, sit down here. Did you say Providence, Hitty? Why, it's terrific. It's the most beautiful city in the world. Trees, houses, streets. It's the garden spot of the universe. Did I mention that some of my best friends live there? Oh, I knew it would be like that. However, however, on the other hand, take New York. Now, I'm not saying it's in the same class with Providence, but it's a mighty handy thing to have around. Look at Broadway, look at the skyscrapers, the subway, Coney Island, Brooklyn, the motherland. What about taking in New York? Why don't you want us to go to Providence, Uncle Don? Don't you like your best friends there anymore? Where? Providence. Why don't you want us to go to Providence? Uh... Uh, uh... Excuse me, I gotta light a cigar. Oh, hello, Donnelly. Oh, 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 hello, Bill. Uh, you're home early, huh? Yep. Can I fix you a drink? No, thanks, not now. How are you, Hitty? I'm fine, Bill. That's good. Hitty, I want to have a little talk with you. I've been thinking things over about you and me, about you. And I've decided the best thing to do is, I'm gonna send you away to school, boarding school. Away? But you can't do that, you can't send the kid away. Listen, Bill, I got a better angle on the whole thing. There'll be a lot of children your own age to play with, nice teachers. You'll be crazy about it, won't she, Donnelly? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. I'd go myself if I had the time. Honest, I would, Hitty. I'm sure you'll like it. Oh, no, Bill, no. But, Hitty, you can't stay here. There's no one to take care of you. Besides, I... Yes, excuse me. Are you Mr. Weatherly? Yes. I'm Mrs. Dean. Dean? Oh, but hasn't Hitty told you I'm her new governess? I thought you'd want me to get somebody after Miss Benson left. Martha, help me. Wasn't Hitty authorized to engage me? Of course not. Oh. Well, I've just unpacked my things. I'm sorry, Miss Dean. I'd like to speak to Hitty alone. Certainly, Mr. Weatherly. Well, I... I've got a few things to do myself. I guess I'll be running along. So long, Bill. See you later, Hitty. A chair. Hitty, I don't know what's gotten into you. You're going away to boarding school, and that's that. But I can't go. What do you mean, you can't go? Julie told me not to leave you, no matter what. When did she say that? She always said it, even before she went away. She told me to watch over you and do everything I could for you, because you're so little.
tell Mrs. What's-her-name she can stay. Oh, I will! Oh, thank you, Agnes. You know what I've been thinking, Mrs. Dean? What? Poor Mr. Bill never will get over Miss Julie. It's getting worse all the time. If he'd only get interested in the theater again. Well, I think if he took more interest in the child, it might help him forget. It just doesn't seem to... Catch him now. You better catch him. Good morning, Mr. Weatherly. Good morning. Hitty asked me to explain why she didn't bring your breakfast tray this morning. She left early before you were awake. She went out with Mr. Donnelly. Oh? I was sure you wouldn't object. Sundays are rather lonely days for Hitty, Mr. Weatherly. I think she misses going to Long Island with you. No, no, I, I don't object. Uh, do everything you can to keep her entertained, will you? Certainly, Mr. Weatherly. Shall I see about your breakfast? No, thanks. I'll have something on the way out. Yes, sir. Bill? What are you doing here? <laughs> You'll see. Well, come on in, Maestro. Make yourself at home. You know everybody. Oh, it's so good to see you again, Dear darling. Bill. Hello, Dear Bill, Ragojin greets you with affection. Well, what is all this? Gathering the clan, Buster. We thought you'd like to see all the old gang again, didn't we, Hitty? Here, let me help you with your mink. As a matter of fact, it was all Hitty's idea. So step right in, partner. Make yourself comfortable. Sure, Mr. Bill. No one can say don't ham up that scene, Judd, like Bill Weatherly. <laughs> Myself, I've been like a country without a king. Sit down. Take a load off your feet. We'll be putting on the feed bag any minute. Aren't you glad everybody's here, Bill? Sure. I'm, I'm glad to see you all. That's the spirit. Martha, your cue. Cocktails, bravo! Next comes food, then I begin to live again. Mr. Weatherly? Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Sit down, Bill. I'll get the appetizers. She's been helping Martha with the hors d'oeuvre. Seems to know just what you like. Bill, I have wonderful news for you. I've just received the most flattering offer. One, I must say, worthy of the talents of Grigory Petrovich Ragozhin. Yeah. I have been invited to play Hamlet with a company of distinguished players as the guest star. Yeah. Well, That's we'll wonderful, take that. Greg. Where, Greg? At the Roofless Barn Theater Company in Lumber City, Minnesota. Oh, <laughs> Lumber City, that ought to be a tremendous production. Oh, but Natch, this will be my first performance since I played it at the Gorky Theater in Nizhny Novgorod. To be or not to be. Bah, how much better Shakespeare is in Russian. Yeah, you can suffer more. Exactly. You have a Russian soul. <laughs> Lumber City, eh? We went through there once, but I don't remember any theater. Me too. or otherwise. Sure. Do you realize the terrible thing that's going to happen to me next Friday? What's that? I'm going to be 25 years old. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> of course, I'm telling everybody else I'm still 21. Anyhow, I'm giving a party and you're coming. Thanks, Ruthie, but I don't think... Mmm, yum, yum. Everything's just the way it was, isn't it, Bill? Oh, I forgot to thank you for inviting me to your lovely party, Hitty. Oh, but it isn't my party. It's Bill. That's right, Hitty, but don't let them stuff themselves. Remember, there's a big feed coming. Something you like, too. She's awfully fond of you, Bill. She sure is. It's a clear case of what they call an obsession.
You're so pretty. You're just like velvet, aren't you? Just like velvet. How beautiful everything looks. It's just the way it was. Do you really think so, Julie? I think so. But you've forgotten something, dear. Bill likes to have music with his lunch. Remember? Oh, yes. Shall I turn it on now? I will. Well, all I know is I've been sleeping better since I've been taking vitamins. Vitamins, my, yeah. Uh, I only took one in my life, and that was to help a pal finish a bottle of them. <laughs> vitamins are okay if they're smothered in steak, huh, Bill? With honey. You said it. Hey, talking about steak, I found a little joint the other night. I got a steak about... on, Bill? No, Hitty. Not now. But Julie told me to turn it on. What? What are you talking about? Julie just said that you like... Music. Just said? Why, yes, just now, in the dining room. We were talking about you and... Oh, but she isn't there now. She never stays very long. Don't you realize she's... But she was there, Bill. She was. Donnelly, take her home. But... Look, I'm sorry. I realize what you're all trying to do, and I, I do appreciate it, but it's just no use. I... <laughs> I ain't telling you not to cry. There's nothing like a good cry. But did you ever try laughing? <laughs> Makes you feel better, huh? Julie was there. She was. She was. Sure, I, I know, kid. Sure she was. I saw her. I saw her. Yes, Miss Dean. Is Hitty there with you, Mr. Weatherly? She isn't. Well, where can she be? I went up to call her for supper and she's gone. Gone? Gone where? Where could she go? Didn't Donnelly bring her home? Get a hold of him and tell him to come over and wait for me. Did you call the orphanage? Call them. I'll be home right away. Mr. Donnelly brought her back about two o'clock. She looked rather tired and said she wanted to take a nap. And when I went upstairs to awaken her at six o'clock, she was gone. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of kids run away after a spat, Mr. Weatherly. But don't worry, we always pick them up sooner or later. What do you mean, sooner or later? Well, you know, once in a while, one of them takes the whole thing too seriously and does something... Uh... But... But Hitty wouldn't do a thing like that. No, of course she wouldn't. Oh, that poor little type. Please, Mrs. Dean. I'll get it. Hello, Sergeant McFarland speaking. Oh, yes. Okay, keep in touch. The orphanage. Not there yet. But it's been hours now. Why hasn't somebody picked her up?
Thanks, Sergeant. Nothing, huh? Headache any better? No, I'm okay. Wouldn't you like a cup of coffee, Mr. Weatherly? No, thanks. I'll take one if you don't mind, Mrs. Dean. Yes, sir. Bill, why don't you go upstairs and lie down? I'll stick by the phone. Go ahead, I'll call you if anything happens. Oh, Mr. Donnelly, I hope Mr. Weather Make doesn't it polite, think... Make Mrs. Dean. Bill, dear, my dearest one, this is our song. It will always be our song, as everything we shared together will always be ours. When you hear this, a part of me will be gone. But Hitty will be there, not to take my place, but to be the living link between us. It was a miracle, my finding her by the sea. The child I was. Dreams, funny little face and all. By now, I'm sure you love and understand each other. You barked at me, too, in the beginning, remember? You know, Hitty and I used to rehearse how to spoil you. At first, it was like a game to her. And then, it became the most important thing in her life. And Bill, dear, when I knew I had to go, I didn't know how to say goodbye. And now I don't have to, do I? How lucky we are to have her, Bill. Yes, Julie. 
here. It was a miracle, my finding her by the sea. My finding her by the sea. By the sea. By the sea. just the trouble, dear. Don't you see? You've been looking for me so hard and Bill's been looking for me so hard that you've missed each other. Isn't that true? Yes, Julie. I guess it is. Then go back. Bill must be terribly worried about you. Do you really think he is? I know he is. Does he see you too? No, dear. Not the way you do. But from now on, I'll be with you in a different way. You'll both see me. Through each other. Through being happy together. Do you understand? I think so, Julie. Yes, I understand. Then go back, dear. Now. And never let him lose you. Go back. Mary! Mary! Bill! Sure, she's all right. Don't worry, honey. We got you now. You warm enough, honey? Yeah, that's just what I was going to ask. Bill. Hmm? You just try to lose me. You just try.
Not a chance, baby. Well, I won't need this anymore. <laughs> I'll have to read that sometime. It won't work. What I need is a good long vacation. Just Hitty and me. You can look after things while we're gone. Yeah, sure. You, you, you need it. Good long vacation. Trees and sky, birds singing, all that kind of stuff. Nothing like good old Mother Nature to pick a fella up. Of course, I ain't saying that putting on a show is in a class with Mother Nature, but me, I just can't get away from the theater. I like the smell of the place. The rehearsals, opening nights, waiting up all night to see what the critics will have to say. <laughs> that may not be nature, but it's second nature to me. I, um, I hear Johnny Conrad's written a new play. Yeah, you want me to get it for you? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to look it over. You mean you're not going on vacation? You're going back to work? Sure. Why not? After all, I got a kid to support, haven't I? Yeah, sure. Well, gee, Bill, that's swell. Congratu... Holy smoke, it worked. What worked? The book, the book. Don't you see? It's the positive approach. There's nothing wrong with child psychology except one thing. What's that? It don't work on kids. They're too smart. Don't you think you two better go to bed? We're going. Good night, darling. Good night, old timer. Good night.